Hi, everyone. Welcome to Guild Chat. This is our third episode of Guild Week. Um, I'm not Ruby, obviously. I'm Lizzie. Ruby is actually out sick today. I'm filling in for her, so hopefully this goes okay. Um, hope you feel better, Ruby. Um, but today we have a really great episode for you. Um, we're going to be talking about guild decorating and arenas and the new crafting profession, the scribe. So uh, before we kick things off live here with a few guests, um, we actually have a video for you. Ruby sat down with game designer Matt Pennebaker to talk all about the scribing profession. So we're going to go take a look at that first, and then we'll be back with more awesome info. All right, we are back, and now we have Matt Pennebaker, game designer. Hello. And why don't you tell us a little bit about what you've been working on? Uh, we're all sorts of things, but uh, as far as guild but halls for are these concerned, purposes. <laughs> uh, I've been working on the scribe crafting profession. Um, sorry, it's a little off putting that my character just logged out of where he was. Awesome. <laughs> That's very helpful. Uh, well, we're back. back Thank you, Matt's character. Jeez. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so the scribe crafting profession, um, they are sort of of key importance to, to the guild hall. Uh, they produce all sorts of things uh, for the guild hall, for you know, for your friends. They're sort of a community effort sort of guy. Um, uh, you know, and there, you know, we have a couple different areas that they uh, that they work in. Um, you know, sort of the most exciting, I think, is the decorations. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, and for people that don't care about decorations, if you really care about Wobble, they also make Wobble consumables. Nice. Um, which I believe someone else is talking about. We can talk about it a yep. little bit, but uh, I won't have the full details on that. So. That's okay. We, um, we'll get that covered, too. Yeah. <laughs> so, but I'll tell you what, why don't we, what we can do is jump into a couple of the specific things that they sure. can make, and you guys get a really good sneak peek at the scribe today. Mm -hmm. um, what's the first thing that we can look at? Uh, so, uh, as with all of our other crafting professions, uh, scribes have a set of backpacks, um, nice. which you can see uh, on my character here, we, we have the first tier of it, of which there are six. <laughs> nice. Uh, so... Um, I guess we probably jump the gun a little bit. Uh, we should talk a little bit about uh, sort of the lore behind the scribe. Yeah, to sort let's of get into why why the backpacks yeah. look good. Because this is a so full crafting profession. It it's full. all the way up to four hundred. Four hundred. Yes. How about five hundred? Uh, Do I hear five hundred? No, no five hundred yet. Uh, you know we we're. We, I'm sorry, no pressure. <laughs> uh, yeah, we you know we have no plans for what it will be, but we're sort of talking about you know. Can we take it to 500? Can we make it feel good? So, uh, you know, awesome. it's it's in, you know, it's in discussion. It's not, I don't want to say it, but it's not off the table. Uh. <laughs> you had to. You had to. You had to. Had to had to. Fine. All right. You're working on something that I enjoy, so I will forgive you. <laughs> All right. So the lore behind the scribe, because it looks like there's a scroll going on in there. Uh, yes. Is that what I'm looking at? Okay. Uh, yes. Yeah. So uh, he sort of has a messenger tube. This is, like I said, this is the first tier backpack. Um, they are all about sort of paper works. Um, and, uh, you know, making paper, making things out of paper, and illuminating paper is uh, sort of the, nice. the historical term for it. So. Um, and, yeah, and as we get deeper into this, we'll, we'll it's, it's important to note that they don't, uh, you know, when we get into decorations and stuff like that, uh, the scribe isn't actually cobbling together chairs and whatnot, but he's actually making sort of these magical plans and blueprints for them. So Very cool. So that explains a lot as to why you'll see the things that are on their back. So this will make more sense as yeah. we go on. <laughs> All right, so mailing tube hung on his back. <laughs> I'm sorry, messenger tube messenger hung tube. on his back. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's, yeah, the pneumatic mailing too. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, and you have your 500. There's, there's what it is. Your 500. <laughs> it's, it's a full pneumatic. Uh, Ascended pneumatic, pneumatic tube. tube. Mail tube. Look <laughs> from the bank. Uh, so uh, please ignore any temporary icons you're about to see because we're looking at a version of, of things that are still very much in progress. Yeah. But uh, we're putting the finishing trust. touches on this, you guys. Yes, trust that these things will all not look this way in the future. But uh, yeah, so just uh, if we want. I assume people want to see the backpacks, unless you think we should just skip them and we'll move on to something else. But, uh. I will punch you. <laughs> <laughs> I will punch you right in the arm. Uh, so, Show uh, me all the things. We'll run, we'll run through the progression, because it's, it's some of the most fun uh, backpacks we have. There's, we, Guild Wars 2 has a rich tradition of over-the-top crafting backpacks. Um, <laughs> yes. I think, you know, the, the, bear, the, was it the leather working one with the, bear, like the full bear skin that on it. That horrified me. Uh, Everybody but, else thought it was super funny. But uh, Scribe has, has turned it up to 11, in my opinion. Oh, uh, no. What have you so done? So we're, we're still in the realm of reasonable backpacks at this point. Uh, this one is actually one of my favorites. This is probably the one my character will, will rock on live someday. Excuse me, NPC. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Okay, uh, so what's this one? So uh, it's you know just, you still have your mail tube. It's a little more ornate, and now you also have your your clipboard for bringing important documents. Of course, uh, as you do in Tyria. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Oh, right. that's, that was the wrong button. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. You're allowed. I, I get one, one of those. Uh, like I said, these icons are temporary, so it's a little hard for me to tell which, which one's which. But, that's okay. Uh, I think this is next. Uh, Whoa. So, there it goes. Okay. This is getting so now you have Now you have your, your messenger bag. Uh, a satchel. That, oh, I love it. Your, whole, your, your, your novel that you're working on at the... Tyrian coffee shops. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So uh, we're about to leave the realm of practicality Yay! Uh, and into the realm of amazingness. So, uh, so now you are fully set up with your your kit for doing all sorts of scroll work. That uh, is a lot of stuff. This one, I would say, actually, we haven't quite left the realm of, of practical. We're we're getting around the edges yet. though. There's uh, like a library in there yes. though. So now, now you have everything you need to create what? any scroll you might want, including your full ink sets and stuff like that. So um, now for my personal favorite, um, where I'm hesitant to show you because it's such an exciting moment that we could we should save for life. But uh, do it. The final tier of the backpack, do it, I which see. is really, I think, takes us to the, to the next level. But. Just, <laughs> You have a, a fully functioning offset pr offset print press machine strapped to your back, so you can just print out whole novels wherever you go. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> is this the first time? You, is this the first time you've this seen this? This is the first time I've seen it. Yes. Uh, I'm your stunned silence. Trying to lot. process this, and I'm picturing him like running through Divinity's Reach with the yeah. papers fluttering out behind him. <laughs> extra, extra. Uh, I find this one a little distracting. That is hilarious. <laughs> I'm gonna. I'm not gonna not wear it for the rest of the uh, of our time here Please because leave it, it on. will. <laughs> that is all amazing. Right. All right, we'll just, we'll leave it on. Okay. Sex the inner oh workings gosh. of uh, of everything that's going on right there. A ridiculous backpack. Yeah. So you go. That is that is the uh, the progression of oh, of the scribe backpack. All right. So how do you? What are the components? I mean, uh, to to actually build one. Yeah. Uh, well. And will this take us into the wider the wider realm of uh, it will. crafting? Uh, there so, are. Um, Sorry, I'm trying to type. I'm certainly not good enough. You are, to type you are completely and, uh, free to type. Uh, I'm not and enough level to not talk. Oh, wait. All right, so. Okay. So, uh, there are some very sort of core components of scribing mm -hmm. um, that almost all of their recipes, if not all of them, use, which are these uh, scribing kits. Uh, let's see, do I have one? Do I have one handy? Okay. So, scribing kit, uh, and again, Temporary icons. Uh, these totally okay. We're these, putting the finishing fact, touches. In up. fact, I set these up this morning uh, to use the proper icons. Thank um, you. So <laughs> by the time, yeah. So uh, by the time I get home today, they'll probably be proper. But nice. Uh, so uh, the you know scribing kit is always made up of uh, of a pen, uh, some ink, and blotting powder, which is actually leaning very heavily on how you know old school, mm -hmm. uh, you know. Uh, Scribing was actually done. Well, you mentioned to me while we were talking earlier that this was a lot like cooking, as yep. far as it's <laughs> it's a deeper crafting profession, and but with more direction. Yeah. <laughs> um, although I did I did tell Matt that I got a lot of kick out of cooking. I really enjoyed just like throwing things in the discovery <laughs> window to see what would happen. So I'm looking forward yeah. to playing with this. Um, but our cooking recipes have a lot of basis in the real world. So. Yeah. That fits. Uh, yeah, uh, you know, we, you know, even though it is sort of a magic, uh, you know, artistic crafting profession, we do still try to keep roots in realism. So, uh, can you uh, see yeah. that backpack again? <laughs> <laughs> Touche. Uh, <laughs> it's so great. Anyways, uh, so yeah, you're saying about uh, you know lots of little components here and there mm -hmm. that sort of bring the whole thing together. A good example of that is uh, you know this is pretty straightforward. A pen is itself made out of a dowel and a this is the the first tier pen. It's made out of a copper. Or, oh, I'm not on the first silver tier. Nib? Or that's okay. Something's messed up. Uh, <laughs> this one's made out of a silver nib and a and a wood okay. dowel. Um, I think that's actually supposed to be copper. So, so well, don't worry. We'll make sure that gets fixed before thank you, before the expansion comes out. Because um, <laughs> I want to play with this. Anyway, you're just gonna ruin the whole thing if it's got the wrong pen tip. <sighs> Everything. Um, but we can talk about that later. And some pigment and some bottles uh, to hold your inks in. Again, <gasps> oh, fairly realistic. Oh, the pigment. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's talk about the pigment. So, before we go on, I haven't played with this. I have deliberately not played with this any more than I have to because I wanted the high-level notes, mm -hmm. and then I wanted to be surprised while we were doing this. Right. So, all right. 
So, so let's talk about pigment. Uh, what do you want to know about pigment? Uh, Where does it come it from? It makes things colorful. Um, oh, you're a hoot. Well, uh, so the uh, pigments come from uh, two main sources. The first is uh, plant nodes sort of throughout the world, uh, jungle and central Tyria. Um, and the second place is, uh, again, somewhat realistic source is you'll be able to salvage dye bottles to get appropriately colored pigments out of them. So if you have a red dye bottle, you'll be able to salvage it and get some red pigment out of it. Um, and uh, the higher quality the dye, the dye, the more pigment you'll get out of it. So, nice. Yeah. So is that just like the ones that you craft? Uh, no, these are the uh, identified dye. Okay, so, okay. Yes. Nice. Uh, you, I would not recommend such a thing, but you could salvage a uh, abyss dye and get some black pigment. Um, probably not worth it because abyss dye is horrendously expensive but <laughs> uh but as the, the kind they're going for is uh you know the hue of the of the dye uh, will determine the pigment you can get out of nice. it. nice all right so pigment and yeah. your pen and your pen and and whatever that thing is at the top which are, oh uh, it's just a bottle uh, that's okay it's a bottle to put your ink in you can find uh, it later if it had the icon you it would have it would have been immediately obvious so awesome Gonna give you guys some secrets, but not all of them. <laughs> all right. So what else? So we have our pen. Yeah, yeah. We've pen. got our pen. We've yep. got. We've used our pigment, and then what do we do with it? Uh, you put it to paper, which is sort of the other side of you know the other main components of scribing mm -hmm. is. Uh, so various tiers of paper. Um, oh, that's sandpaper. Hey, We're, I wasn't quite ready for that. Let's yet. talk about sandpaper in a okay. minute. Yeah, let's pretend we didn't see that one yet. Uh, <laughs> so we have paper, um, which is again very realistically crafted from uh, you know wood fibers and um, cloth fibers. So, mm -hmm. so this tier happens to be made out of soft wood pulp and uh, uh, wool. Wool and water. Neat. Yeah. All right. So. Rough paper. Yep. Rougher paper would be sandpaper. <laughs> so, uh, sandpaper. If are you ready to get into sandpaper? Let's, let's. I find do, this pretty yeah. exciting because it, I do it's, too. It's something that's kind of close to my heart. Uh, so, have you uh, been farming someplace? I have not. No. Oh, okay. Uh, I, uh, I have the dubious honor of being responsible for uh, piles of silky sand. Uh, <laughs> Hang on, he's making it better. Go. So, uh, sandpaper very naturally is crafted from paper and sand, um, but not silky sand because that would be too smooth to, uh, you know, actually grind away things. I guess it's worth also noting that sandpaper is used exclusively in decoration crafting. Um, okay. Uh, you know, because that's where it makes sense to use it. So. All right, so where do I get coarse sand? Uh, well, coarse sand... I already know the answer. I just like hearing you say it. <laughs> uh, so currently on live, when you obtain silky sand, uh, when you use it, you have a chance of getting nothing. And going forward, uh, once you know, Heart of Thorns launches, using it will uh, either give you the things it gives you uh, currently, uh, and instead of getting nothing, you will get coarse sand. So every click. Uh, every click. Excuse will me, give every you double every, click will every, give you yeah. something. Every other click will give you something there. Nice. Um, and then coarse sand itself uh, is tradable. Okay, so it's tradable if you don't want to craft, yep. if you don't want to use it for sandpaper? Yep. That's awesome. Then you can sell it to people who want it. So. Thank you so much. Seriously. I'll be hanging on to that until it launches. <laughs> Sweet. So. All right, so we have pen, sandpaper, linseed oil. Linseed oil, which, I don't know, was that intentional? It's, it's, I know it's in these recipes somewhere, but I didn't see it. Okay. Well, um, we can just talk about it if you don't. I, I think I have the recipe right here. If you oh, nice. Um, oh, wait. Oh, interesting. Well, here's linseed oil. Something that's, something's not right, because the uh, scribe should be able to make linseed oil. I'll have to, I'll have to look at that one after. The scribe will be able to make linseed oil. They will be able to. Everyone will be able to make linseed oil. That's a, certainly a topic for another day. But uh, uh, where it comes from is flaxseed, which is just, that's where linseed oil comes from. Um, and where flaxseed comes from is, though that is a new uh, resource node in all the jungle maps. Nice. So. Okay. So we have all of these things. Yep. I'm just, I'm following the progression here <laughs> again. All right. So what happens once you have all of these? You, is this what you use to make your decorations? Uh, 
Yes. Uh, okay. This this and others. Wait a minute. If you don't know, <laughs> we're in uh, trouble. No, I, oh, I know. It's it's used for so uh, the sandpaper is only used for decorations, but the scribing okay. kits, the linseed oil, they're used sort of all over the place. Um, so, for example, the the um, scribe has a series of consumables, um, uh, much like the weaponsmith makes uh, sharpening stones. Um, but uh, Scribe makes um, these sort of magic scrolls that uh, will give you a utility buff. So sweet. Um, but then, in terms of decorations, you then process. You sort of make deca. Uh, I have them. A finishing kit. Oh, we just had it too. Yes. Yep. I think I accidentally clicked on it before. So you make finishing kits out. That's where the oil and the sandpaper come in. Oh, That's okay. <laughs> uh, I made these recipes like three months ago, so I don't have them all in my brain anymore. But uh, That's so. Okay. Use a finishing kit, and uh, here's where it gets fun. You don't actually create them from uh, just things out in the world. Um, you create decorations from other decorations. How so? So, uh, so there is a, um, at some point in your progression in your guild hall, you will unlock a decoration vendor. Uh, as you buy and place those decorations, they end up in your, inven in your decorations inventory, or your decoration storage, rather. I'm Lincoln Connor are going to kill me because I keep because I don't know the names or anything. But um, as long as they don't do it right now while yeah. you're on camera, I can I can help hide uh, you afterwards. <laughs> so uh, I'm not going to get too deep into decorations because that is I, I know other people are going to be talking about this more in depth. Mm -hmm. But uh, you know you fill out some of the some of the decorations in this panel will be you know purchased and then the scribe can then take those and refine them or change them and make them cooler. Yes. Uh, some will just be sort of refinements, and then other ones will be changing them entirely to uh, sort of different classes of decoration. Um, you know, chairs will stay chairs, but if you mm -hmm. want, you know, a chair with a very specific look, it requires items from specific parts of the game to make. Neat. All right, so that is a very, very cool run through. <laughs> I'm looking forward to getting my hands on this for real. I have one last question for you. Mm -hmm. What do you think, what is your favorite decoration for the guild hall. What do you think is the coolest thing that you uh, can make? It's tricky. I really was hoping I'll show it to you, but my, my my guild in this account is all messed up right now. But um, my favorite decoration is the uh, the Tequaddle statue. Ooh. I'm going to just leave that hanging there and let everyone sort of think about what that might look like, what that might mean. <laughs> that is not one I knew about. Okay. No, this is okay. not the one we were supposed to talk about? No, I'm, okay. no, that's a good thing. I was like, oh, I just learned a new thing. Okay, well. But you also told me about an orchestra. Oh, yes. And that's the uh, one. A lot of the decorations, when you see how you obtain them, mm -hmm. the, the goal is that it makes sense. Uh, yeah. So, again, I'm just going to leave that hanging out there and people can right. do that what they want. Speculate. Um, you guys can help me speculate. As for uh, the uh, orchestra, so in um, Divinity's Reach, there is Uzalan's Mechanical Orchestra. Uh, it's it's a point of interest. It's a really cool you know piece of of machinery, um, and scribes will be able to craft them for their guilds. And so. really, who hasn't wanted one of their very own? <laughs> uh, hopefully, I, if, if I can remember where it is, I'll remind people to look. Like I don't know if I can yep. find it again. You should check it out in Divinity's <laughs> Reach. It's kind of a can't miss it thing. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Uh, so the process for this is a little bit different. Um, Further on into the crafting profession, you'll be able to craft a sketchbook, um, which sort of, info, you know, uh, let's let's describe, teach himself how to uh, reverse engineer this this order. So uh, you'll complete a collection. So the sketchbook unlocks a collection, and completing that collection will unlock the recipe to be able to craft these. Gotcha. It should That's be a fun fun little cool. journey uh, for the scribes to sort of you know take out through the world and uh, figure out how to make their own sort of big epic decorations. Awesome. All right, thank you very, very much, Matt. Very well. And thank you, Divinity's Reach, for giving us a pretty background <laughs> while you download. So, all right, thanks a lot. I appreciate it. You're right. very welcome. Thank you. Hey, everybody. Hi. We're back. Hello. <laughs> that was a really fruitful discussion. Wouldn't you agree? Oh, yeah. yeah. Got down to the core of scribing. Oh, love it. Um, <laughs> Thanks, Ruby and Matt, for that <laughs> awesome video. Uh, I am here with Seth and Dara and this guy who kind of wandered into our live stream room. I don't know. Just kidding. It's Colin. We love Colin. Thanks for coming. Um, so that was awesome. Um, how about we get into talking about manufacturing? I think that was something we wanted to bring up. So, Yeah, so manufacturing. So there's a building over here called the workshop. Let's head over there. 
need some like Benny Hill music or something. <laughs> <laughs> Where's Richie when you need him? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so here, so here is the workshop in Cave. At about this point, Dara should be uh, selling just how beautiful it is. While you want to get <laughs> oh, it's, it's so beautiful and majestic and golden and gilded and definitely superior to that sandstone <laughs> structure that might be over in Las Pescas, <laughs> right? All right, so very stations here. Uh, all right, so I'm a level 500 scribe, 400 scribe. I don't know if you can actually get to 400. Yes. I cheated. Yeah, you can Scribing get to 400. Is 400. 400. Okay. Yeah, 400 is your cap. So here we go. Uh, uh, guild, world, event, skinemat skinematic, skinematic. Anyways, so you, you, you can read. I can't talk, but you can read. So craft this. I didn't get anything in my inventory, but what I did get is the guild now has that schematic. There we go. <laughs> so if I head over here to the uh, processing mm. -a bob. <laughs> yeah, uh, term. yeah. Okay, let's see. So here we've we got can take our placeholder under construction icon items. Yep. So uh, gathering surface banner. Uh, let's build one of those. Oh, cool. Um, I have to look into why that one didn't show up. You notice as a wolfy wool processing and a PVE processing, mm -hmm. so they have different cues. So your wolfy wool players wanting to create uh, things for uh, guild uh, capturing in wolfy wool, they won't be competing with PVE players that want to make banners and whatnot. So cue those up. Hmm. Guess we can't. So. Uh, when it ships, you'll be able to do that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh yeah, let's. So here's here's a magical button. Uh, we can spend fifty two fuel, fifty two uh, residents. Yeah, this is uh, this is stuff that you earn as uh, you play guild missions. Mm. Uh, um, out in the world, you will actually get uh, resonance uh, as items you can come back, trade in, um, and you can spend it to help speed up uh, content like this. You can also trade influence uh, mm -hmm. for those guilds who have extra influence laying around. Um, influence is being retired as a guild currency, but you can spend your leftover influence to purchase fuel, which you can use to help speed up uh, the production of items like this as well. It's worth noting that we are playing in a fully upgraded guild hall right now. Um, so nice. when you first get your guild hall, none of this stuff would be here. This building would be a pile of ruins, and you would go through an entire upgrading process to um, build all of this stuff with you and your guild mates. Um, all total, we're looking at about nine months or so to get right. every single possible upgrade that's going to ship the day that the guilds go, guild halls go live. Yeah. Um, so you're going to see a ton of stuff in here that over the next six to nine months, you and your friends and your guild are going to be working together to build out and, and be able to build all of these, uh, including this specific building right here. Wow. So now that so now that we uh, got some stuff out of the oh here's something to show um, one moment I'll just clear this queue uh, pay attention to the pretty particle effects pretty oh hey they're Ooh. gone interesting anyways uh, <laughs> <laughs> to explain what just happened there is basically whenever you have something that's going into that queue. Your guild and you will be able to recognize that something is actively being constructed at that time mm. because you'll get that effect over mm -hmm. the assembly device. So it's a nice visual com uh, confirmation that something has been completed for you guys. So here, so in the guild panel, tab number three is storage. Mm -hmm. Here we've got various groups, consumables, so here's the things we were making. Uh, so those are made by this assembly device here. Here is where you double click to deploy them, etc. War chest, so here's all your Volvi World items. Cool. Uh, decorations, so here is your list of every decoration you have unlocked. Um, also this, all with temporary icons. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and this is a lot of work worth of decorations here. Brought to you by cheating. And then here are the decorations that you've unlocked for your arena. They are unlocked via upgrades instead of via crafting. So you get an upgrade, it gives you a set of decorations. You purchase another upgrade, it gives you another set of decorations. Cool. And we will we will go we'll into look at that. that later, yeah. Right? Cool. So let's uh, 
pretend that we don't have a bunch of declarations, so let's get some. Cool. So as Pennant Baker mentioned, your base declarations you get via a merchant who's sitting over here in your market. This merchant is one of the upgrades that you'll get as you build the market building and upgrade it. Um, the basic decoration vendor is one of the things that you'll get along with that. Okay, so Douglas Bode, basic decorations. <laughs> so let's see, yeah, baskets sound good. Oh, I don't have any of these. Uh, I hear that that's a currency that we get in one of our, our maps. Yeah. That might be true. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see. This is probably... Quantity. And then army. There we go. Okay, so yeah. Uh, basket, so let's go over here so that we can uh, watch numbers go up because everyone loves that. <laughs> And let's buy some of these. So you'll notice that you don't actually get anything here, but your guild does. Okay, now that we have some baskets, we can place the baskets, or we can go, as Pennebic was talking about, we can go scribe them into better things. Uh, so. so you can turn your basket into a larger basket decoration. Indeed. Or a basket with a top. So to place something, baskets upon baskets. <laughs> just double click it here. You'll notice that your skill palette is changed with the, to the decorating skill palette. We've got place. We have uh, three different erasers, small, medium, large. These oh, erase wow. in, an er yeah. in an area. We have select decoration, which brings up the palette, so you can select a, another one. And then, of course, stop the exit command. And what's the maximum number of each decoration that you can have? The max, well, so that depends, so currently the maximum I can have for the basket is five, because that's all I have. Mm -hmm. uh, as far as a cap, that's poor decoration, so you can have, so you, there's unique decorations which you can only have one of. Uh, most decorations you can have, I don't remember the number, but yeah, let's say 250. It's a lot. It's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the maximum you can place in the entire guild hall is over several hundred. Excellent. Okay, so to place this thing, so you'll yeah. notice when we use the skill, we get, get our holographic display here. And so if we click, we're going to place it. But if we click and drag, this is a placeholder ah. art. We're working on that. Cool. You can now rotate it. I didn't choose a very fascinating thing to rotate. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go ahead and place that there. Uh, if I place everyone I can possibly place. You has a basket. It's a basket case. Ah, yes! <laughs> yes! <laughs> Your my music. skill over there <laughs> will switch to cannot place. But that that's, that's boring. Let's see what <laughs> And each, uh, each guild, the guild leaders can set who has rights to do decorating in the guild hall. So if you have somebody in your guild who gets completely out of control with decorations <laughs> and you really need to rein them in, you can go ahead and say this person is no longer allowed to decorate. Like, do too but, many baskets, come but, on. <laughs> by creating a new rank of people who are bad at decorating uh, and yeah, restricting that from them. Too many baskets. <laughs> You're <just> shut down. <laughs> Don't be a basket case. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. You could so. make a ring called <laughs> egg. Is like moving on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying here. <laughs> You're doing so well. Oh, look at those beautiful balloons that were decorated over there. Oh, yeah. yeah. That totally. is a decoration. That is indeed a decoration. I placed that there so I'd remember the spot that I chose earlier. Oh, good. <laughs> Smart. Okay, so yeah, let's have some fun. Get the gold wall because it's huge. <gasps> Oh my god. And that. Uh, oops. Oh no. Oh, that's fine. Oh no. So we're in a place that has awkward collision. Don't. Oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you can currently trap yourself inside decorations. It's Yay. a fun game that we all like to play or trap our friends. <laughs> Two ways to get out of that. Yep. <laughs> you can waste the thing. <laughs> you can waste the thing or you can go to a waypoint. Oh, I 
Let's find that spot where it let us place it. I had much better luck with this collision when I was testing it. But I guess that's how it always goes. Right. Uh, uh, uh. Uh, uh, oh, okay. So what well, kind of things are we looking for for placing decorations? You mean for where it's valid? Yeah. It's got to have a it's got to have a foam base. So the the slope the slope of the towing down that has to not be too extreme. Oh, okay. So a hill like this is not the most yeah, ideal it'll, place. It'll for tell you. you. See, oh, so apparently I'm in collision. Let's pull it out. There, there we, we go. go. Boom. Okay. Ooh, yeah. Now, next step. If only you could jump up to it. Indeed. Mm. Hmm. What could help with that? <gasps> a chair. <laughs> Let's just get this out of the way right now. No, we are not. <laughs> not <laughs> yet having any it. new ability to sit on chairs. Uh, <laughs> it is unfortunately incredibly complicated to solve chair sitting technology in the world say. of Syria for <laughs> five different size races and yeah. different size characters. But you can jump all over chairs. Yes. And help you reach high places, mm -hmm. which I do in my day-to-day -day life all the time. Okay, that, that's, that's a bit far. <laughs> I don't think I'll be able to That's really good to know. Uh, tiny person. Awesome. Okay. I believe I should... It, that, this looked a lot sca less scary last time. I <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm just going to play it safe. Oh, oh I'm out of tables. tables. <laughs> well, it's a table list for now. <laughs> what? Hmm. Dang. How did I? No. How did I make that jump before? Magic. I guess so. Okay, well, this this is this is still fixable. Let's let's get up to that. <laughs> this is like me in every jumping puzzle ever. <laughs> we'll just uh, ignore how bad I was just at jumping right there. So you're seeing some of the basic decorations that work here, things like tables yeah. and chairs. Um, but there's tons of other types of decorations, more than just the ones you get from that basic decoration vendor. Um, there's all the ones you create through the scribing profession, um, which right. is a, one of the ways that you build a lot of um, better decorations. Uh, there are ones that uh, require you to do content out in the world. Um, certain bosses will drop parts that you need to help build a decoration. Uh, Crystal talked about uh, last week when we were talking about raids, how certain mm -hmm. raid bosses actually need to defeat them, um, can give you decorations uh, for Sweet. your guild hall that is actually like the statue of that boss that you built. So um, this is really, uh, you know, a system we can just go to town with um, and create decorations out of just about anything uh, and put them anywhere in the game that we want. Um, so this is a really exciting tool for the guild team to be able to build out rewards for the, the future of Guild Wars 2. Uh, and we cannot wait to see what people do with their guild halls once they get their hands on this system. It is absolutely crazy. I mean, even just this tiny little, like, like area, just, I, I'm blown away. I don't know. I can't, I can't wait to see what people do with it. Some of our QA testers did really cool constructions of like spiral staircases out oh, wow. of couches where they just had them wrapping up and climbing up into the air. And then we had uh, testers who were creating like giant mountains of fountains and like there's these cascades of water because they had these different layers of fountains built up. That's amazing. Yeah. I mean, you could just have so much fun with your guildies too. Oh, come on. Like building different jumping puzzles and stuff. Yeah. It's going to be fun to watch people make videos of, you know, tours of their decorated guild hall and what theirs looks like versus yeah. other. And, you know, one of, one of the pillars that we gave this team was just ignite player creativity, right? Mm. Just give them a whole bunch of sandboxes to play in and let's see what they can come up with. For sure. Uh, and certainly decorations is one of the top couple components for that. Um, when we go to look at the arena, you'll also get to see another place built for that. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> nice. Amazing. All right. Now that really gets fun. Uh, actually, wait, I need to place another one of these walls yeah. first. Uh, this is incredible. About there, that should be fine. Don't really care what it looks like. <laughs> we'll 
see why I don't care what it looks like in a moment. Oh, is this guy too big? Okay. To the eraser. Ta da! Wow. Yes, you can build your own jumping puzzles. Yes. <laughs> Incredible. Now, my goal is to get over there. I didn't actually build this all the way out to there when I was testing it, so this could get interesting. <laughs> Uh, let's see, let's get a plant of some sort. I don't think you can stand. Ooh, that's cool. Yeah, yeah, that's too big though. Well, uh, we have a question. Yes, will there be a way to remove all decorations from the guild hall if you get a, a troll in your guild who hides your decorations? <laughs> so we've definitely, definitely talked about that, and we, there is no way currently implemented at this exact moment, but that's something that we'll. Talking about that. Yep. You know, the real solution is don't invite trolls to your guild. Step one. But <laughs> in case but. that doesn't work out, we'll definitely have to have some some tool in the future to help support uh, more of this. Yep. You know, like I said earlier, this is like just like everything else that we're doing in this expansion. The guild team is a rolling team that will continue on past the launch of Heart of Thorns, right. uh, and we'll be continuing to provide support for all of this stuff. So, you know, once this goes live, suggestions and cool ideas our players have. Really, the guild team will be there to support building out more and more awesome functionality for guilds. Mm, that, that. Okay, this is cool, but I don't have enough, so I'm going to cheat to get myself more pillows. <laughs> more pillows. Oh, wait. Mm -hmm. Pillows not included. That's fine. The red throw pillow, always classic. Uh, yeah, so while we're putting all this stuff together, if there are any questions in chat, we might be able to answer some. So throw them out there. While we're arranging our throw pillows. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, this is so fun. Here we go. Oh, no, you yeah. didn't. Yeah. Amazing. Oh, no, 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 amazing. So you can't totally see it on the stream, but when you use the eraser tool, um, wherever you hover the little icon, all the props that you're going to erase get a red outline around the edges of them. So you can tell, especially down to really fine detail when you have a bunch of, bunch of props near each other, you can actually tell which decorations you're going to erase and which one you aren't. Um, and that's why there's three different sizes of eraser as well. So you can get down to really small levels of detail for erasing. Wow. Uh, will there be any like holiday themed decorations that we can expect? Uh, that is definitely something that is on our radar. Uh, certainly Halloween is shipping the day that Heart of Thorns goes live as well. Uh, yeah. And there are some very cool opportunities for us to do some fun stuff with decorations for holidays. Um, you know, we really want to give the opportunity for guilds to feel like they're going to decorate and then they're going to take all their decorations down and decorate in a brand new way. Um, and things that tie to festivals and holidays in particular is a great way to encourage them to do that. So mm -hmm. as the seasons change, you can change your anthem in your guild hall and have different music playing, and you can oh, change up your cool. decorations and really have different themes. Yeah. Um. Okay, so Della warned me just a bit ago that those have a bug where they don't have collision, and I was thinking, that just means I can't erase them. That's not going to be a problem, but that also means I can't stand on them. Silly me. It's true. <laughs> Um, I think we addressed this earlier, but is there a limit to how many objects are in your guild hall? Yeah. Is it unlimited? or is No, it like it's, it's not unlimited. It's uh, 2,000. Yeah, it's, it's something that it's, it's in the thousands. Um, right. Yeah, there's a, there's a limit performance-wise that we had to set on. And there's also a limit to the number that can be in any given area um, right. for the same reasons as to help control perf. But we, we shot for a number that was ridiculously over the top yeah. uh, and seemed like more than enough. For sure. Um, so when you're building puzzles and things and you erase any objects, do you still have them in your inventory or that you just like, like you can place them other places? Like how does that work? Uh, yeah, so. Sorry to distract you while you're doing no, this very complicated thing. <laughs> okay, so 
So yeah, so here I've, I've placed these fancy chairs, but it shows me as has having none here. Yeah. Uh, that's only displaying like that on the UI, because the UI is intelligent. You actually still have those. Yeah. You have a number that you own and a number that you placed, and it's showing the difference between the two. Oh, OK, OK. So yeah, you can never lose something by placing it. You don't. Yeah. It doesn't get, get removed from your inventory, it's your like, guild's uh, inventory, or anything. I yes. put the chair in the wrong place. <laughs> it's gone forever. <laughs> so like, if you if you get the heroic edition of Heart of Thorns, mm -hmm. um, it comes with actually a, a token that you'll be able to take to your guild hall and exchange at a merchant to purchase one of three different decorations. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Uh, and the idea behind that is every one of those decorations someone in your guild gets gets added to this you know your guild vault that everyone can then use to decorate the guild oh, okay. halls. So everyone can have all of them. That's good. Can I make that jump? Hey, hey, okay. Um, Ooh, don't want that. A little. While Seth is working his magic, uh, Colin, maybe you can speak to this. But uh, the overall like vision for the guild hall system, like mm -hmm. what what kind of direction did you want the team to take when you tasked them with creating this huge system for the expansion? Uh, you know, we, we actually we debated really heavily what guild halls were going to be very early on. Um, an interesting story there. We, we, uh, we originally started with something very different um, that was more of a content-based model that was about um, guilds having a map that they did content in. Um, and the more we dug into that, <laughs> that's awesome, Seth. Uh, <laughs> yeah. the, the more we realized that, you know, guild halls, uh, in particular from Guild Wars 1, the thing that they were most important to our players were a place socially for you and your guild members to get together and have a great mm -hmm. time. Um, and that was our greatest memory of it. And a lot of the great things that people remember about them was, you know, getting your guild together and having parties and having um, discussions, having elections. Uh, yeah. And we decided to go down that path of let's, Let's make this a sandbox for guilds. Let's make this a home in our world for our players. Um, and we debated a lot about housing, too, uh, about, you know, should this be, should we just make a big housing system or should we do a guild system? Um, and ultimately, one of the goals of Guild Wars 2 is trying to bring players together and make it so, you know, we have millions of people playing online together. Let's provide systems that makes it fun to bring everyone together and play rather than put right. them off in their own little place. Um, and we decided, let's focus on making guild halls the place where you come and you do all this decorating or where you hang out with your friends um, and put as many tools in here as we possibly can for guilds to just have a great time. Right. Uh, and I think the decorating system and the arena probably embody mm -hmm. the, the, that to its purest core um, and I think give you some ideas of the types of things we could do in the future for, for guilds with guild halls as well. But this really is, you know, I think, I think this team in particular is a, a labor of love of how do we give our players every possible tool that they can go bananas and do fun stuff with? Yeah, totally. um, that, that idea of having floating decorations like this and being able to stack them on top of each other was actually a, a, you know, a bug. Uh, <laughs> and we discussed it as a team. And we're like, that's an awesome bug. There's no way we're fixing that. Just leave Not it in the a game. Bug, it's, like, a it's way better this way. It's, this, 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 is, this is what we should have designed from the start. So there's a bunch of stuff like that where we kind of said guild halls are allowed to break all the rules. Um, cool. You know, they don't. Anything you do in here really doesn't affect the play experience of anyone else outside of the game or outside of your guild. Um, we leave it on you and your guild to manage those relationships and how you interact together um, and how you decorate. It's, it's really between you and your fellow players to control that. And we just want to give you a giant toolbox, and here is a sandbox for you to play in. That's awesome. That's really cool. Um, uh, a couple other questions from chat. Uh, let's take a look. Uh, will there be any decorations on the gem store? TBD. TBD. We'll see. Yeah. Okay, good to know. I think um, for, for now we're focused on building awesome rewards moments with the system that we've got today, but, you know, we don't, we'll never rule anything out for sure, um, so yeah. we'll, we'll see, yeah. Um, are decorations, any of them scalable by chance? Not yet? No. Okay. No, you, that is part of upgrading them, actually, is you have the smaller <laughs> tables and you want to right. upgrade them and you scribe them to become bigger ones um, and more ornate tables and amazing things like what Seth is standing on right now. Um, cool. Um... Someone's asking, can we preview guild halls before claiming them? You can, yes. When you go to, you're not able to run around in them, um, but you can if you know another guild who owns that one, you can go preview and check it out. Um, there is, uh, from the initiative HQ and Lion's Arch, there's a cinematic um, that you can watch that showcases uh, each guild hall um, mm -hmm. before you go on the mission to go capture it. Uh, so you can see this is what it looks like. That place looks amazing. I love it. Let's go there. Um, it's not a free tour you can go run around in because you haven't liberated it from Mordremoth yet, so no free tours. Um, but yeah. it is someone set up uh, a magical camera that flies around and shows you what it looks like inside. Mm. 
that's really that's nice. That's tricky. <laughs> <laughs> um, are there any decorations that offer rewards? Uh, that way we could put rewards at the end of jump puzzles. Something maybe to consider. I don't know. Decorations. Though. Decorations. Cool. So they, I think they want a chest yeah. at the end that they can put. Oh, that like the guild could put items yeah. into for other guild members to get? That would be amazing. Right? <laughs> that's, a, that's a great idea. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> it's very cool. We'll backlog um, that one. Thank you. It's, it's uh, so maybe we should actually shift gears and go over to uh, the arena. This is the one I'm most excited about to see, um, building your arena and your guild hall and what that entails. Um. Oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> There should be a floor is lava rule in, in certain guild halls yes. where the only way you're allowed to move is if you decorate yourself from one side of the guild hall to another. Yes. <laughs> All right, so here's the arena. It is, wow. in my opinion, Massive. the coolest building in the cave guild hall. That's awesome. Shout out to Jeff. He built all of these amazing buildings. Thanks, Jeff. Jeff is incredible. <laughs> Are we in a proprietor? He's kind of awesome. Wow, that guy. Awesome. Yeah. Sweet shades. Caster Shoutsman. He's legit. All Aww. right, so we just went to the... <laughs> <laughs> we just went to the top of the arena, so we got a spectating wing. So this arena and the one in Heights is the same size. This one looks bigger. Uh, the reason this one looks bigger is because the spectating wing is farther out. The wing in Heights actually goes under the spectating wing. The inner wing, the platform. Okay, so you'll notice in inside the arena there on the, in the platform there's all these teleport pad things. So there's one of those for every team. We head up into here. See those NPCs with logos over their head? So those are the NPCs for the various teams. So let's join Red Team. Cool. And there are in total three teams currently. There is red, green, and blue. And there is also a free-for-all hmm. character which is going to create some really fun guild uh, activities, <laughs> I think. Uh, let's see. Who's in? All right, let's see if let's see if we can get uh, McKenna in here to fight against us. But in the meantime, so obstacle coordinator, there's a boundary you can activate. So let's activate that thing. Um, oh hey, I can't fall off the edge. That's boring. Oh, excellent. And if you wish, you can deactivate the boundary and play other player golf. <laughs> uh, and attempt to create your own games to launch people off the edge. Um, My inner mesmer goes, yes. <laughs> yeah, I would, I would encourage all guilds out there to have their own game um, where you are only allowed to use skills that are knockback and control skills. You change out all your utilities and weapon skills, uh, and you come in here and play golf and try to knock everyone off of the platform. <laughs> King of the hill, if you will. Um, do you get any rewards for winning arena, arena nope. fights? Or? I pride. Pride. Yes. Yeah, the most Bragging important rights. reward of all. You are the best <laughs> in your rights. guild and or versus other guilds. Omnis. Love it. Uh, and it's how many players? It's We currently have it capped at 80. Mm -hmm. Wow. So we've, we've tested internally um, with, you know, smaller numbers. Uh, we've tested with 15 on 15, with 20 on 20, um, slightly more than that in a free-for-all. Um, it all felt pretty good. Um, I would say around 20 on 20, it starts feeling pretty, pretty full. Uh, I think it is, you know, um, this is a question we're going to get a lot, uh, is, you know, how does this compare to the Obsidian Sanctum area? Mm -hmm. um, I think for a lot of folks who enjoy that, uh, you know, large guild 20-on-20 20 20 battles um, in particular right now, um, you know, part of this is this is intended to be an additional home for those folks to play. Um, you can do crazy decorations and change up your arena, as Seth is doing right now. Mm -hmm. um, you can also just leave it as a fat, flat place to play in. Um, it is about 75% of the playable space of the Obsidian Sanctum right now, um, and then it has the arenas beyond it. 
Um, we are also working on, um, in the future, we're going to add a larger version of the arena um, that is not actually in the guild hall. It's a separate place you can go to um, that is an upgraded larger arena that is more akin to the size of the Obsidian Sanctum or a little bit wow. bigger um, for even larger guild battles for people to take place in. But this, this supports pretty well 15 on 15 or smaller. Other than that, it gets a little cramped, um, mm -hmm. but it does work for up to 80 players. Wow. Um, like Seth said, uh, and here are, oh, let's talk about some of these cool decorations. Yeah. Yeah, so those toets you can play. So here's a knockback toet, which is yes. especially fun if you uh, place it near the edge. <laughs> so we have, we have some torches. I placed a couple of these over here. Uh, so decorations can be intractable, and these torches are an example of that. So they're pretty simple. You activate them to turn the flame on or off. Uh, I'm sure you can think of all sorts of uses for that, though. We have a wall. Very simple. Very practical. If you hadn't thought of it, the torch is for keeping score. For the record. <laughs> <laughs> good call, good call. Um, so can you bring other guilds into the arena to fight you? Yes. How does uh, that work? So it works the same way that you bring uh, guilds into the guild hall. Okay. Uh, so anyone who is in your party mm -hmm. or is in your squad, if you are in the guild hall, they can enter as well. Cool. Uh, so, if you want to have that big, huge fight against your rival guild, then invite that, all of them to your squad, into the guild hall. They can all enter as well. Um, before you fight, make sure everyone's there so that the uh, map doesn't scale up on you, because mm. that could get annoying. Yeah, one of, uh, I think one of the biggest uh, constraints right now that guilds have who want to duel against each other is basically they have the Obsidian Sanctum or World vs. World as a place to do it, which means the only guilds they get to duel against are the two worlds they are currently matched against in World vs. World, and they can never duel against guilds who are in the same world as them in World vs. World. Uh, this is really intended to be just like when we talked about decorating being a platform for creativity for our players mm -hmm. and a sandbox. Uh, this is a home for players to build their own games, their own game modes for dueling and fighting against each other and within their own guild. Um, and for players who love fighting other guilds, this is a place, now a home for them to bring mm -hmm. any guild, whoever they want. Yeah. If it's from their world, if it's from another world, you don't have to worry about any of that stuff anymore. Uh, and we're really excited to see what players Ooh. do. Uh, and now we have someone to kill. <gasps> it's on. McKenna, you can do it! No! <laughs> Call Seth, Gilded Hollow Pride. <laughs> oh, the outside barriers are off. Outside barriers are indeed oh, off. Oh, don't look out, McKenna. You're fighting a mesmer. Oh, shit. I didn't even look to see where she was. That was, that was a complete waste. <gasps> no! No! no. So close. <laughs> For the record, because this always comes up, these are not like real builds that anyone took any time to make. I know you guys always make, always make fun of us on stream for the horrible builds that we're using, and yes. that's because we just press play with a random character and go in. Seth that's is okay. actually very, very good at the game. Yes. <laughs> I think I'm going to let myself die. So when you invite other guilds in to play, how, do they, or how are they recognized as an enemy? Is that when you choose what team you're on? Or? Okay. Exactly. So you, yep. Choose like red, green, blue. Is that what you're yeah, it's really it's all self-organized. Uh, okay. Every everything about the experiences in the guild hall is asking a player, the players, to organize mm -hmm. and, and handle it themselves. Um, yeah. We're just giving you the tools, and you can do whatever yeah. in the world you want with them. Um, and you know, not just with this stuff, but things that we do in the future. That's very much going to be the uh, the thought process we use into uh, what we put in here for guilds. So yeah. that idea of a treasure chest you can put treasure into at the end of a jumping puzzle, like that's perfect for this type of thing. Super yeah, cool. Yeah. Whoever thought of that, are you interested in a job? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Our janitor position is open. Oh, I'm just, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, will we be able to save present arena decorations? Like, can you have templates for your arena that you could save? Unfortunately, no. Uh, this will save, so uh, let's see. Goodbye, Guildhall. Bye-bye. McKenna has no idea what just happened. Like, Where'd you go, man? That was some fun. I was winning the duel and you left. <laughs> no deep. But yeah, so now if I head back into the guild hall, all that, all that state is saved. Okay. Um, that was a very bad test because McKenna is keeping the instance open. <laughs> <laughs> Assuming that we'll was a out. legitimate Pretend test. Pretend it works. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
Darius tested it. It works. It does work, yes. <laughs> Excellent. But unfortunately, once you delete the decorations, uh, we don't currently have any, any way for you to restore a particular... Uh, Particular scheme. You know, half the fun of Guild Hall is just putting all. It's like your Legos when you were a kid, and you mm -hmm. build everything, and then mm -hmm. that moment where you tear it all apart. You didn't get to save it with your Legos. You could yeah. take a picture, but otherwise, it was really the joy of trying to put it all back together again the right way. And that's pretty much what we're offering here. Think of it as a feature. <laughs> oh yeah, there's this team. So we also have an invulnerable team. Let's see, is we kind of still here? No, she left. Ah. Uh, oh, that, that, that's fine. I've got a flame to it. Can you build stuff while you're fighting? You can totally decorate like crazy while people like are that. fighting in the arena. Oh, and that is that. very fun. That could be interesting. Yeah. Oh, Link's really made this invulnerable. So Cause like, you Link, you're too good. <laughs> 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 All right, so the invulnerable team, uh, you can take damage down to zero, uh, but you can't actually die. And so, let's see, uses for this. Um, you could keep taking hits from warriors with hammers and never actually die, so the warriors never have to lay off. Wow. Or oh, is that, that's guardians with hammers, my yep. bad. Yeah. Um, you could have free-for-all guys in a, in a free-for-all game McKinnon. with one person who is unkillable. And <laughs> it's whoever survives last other than that person. Wow. Um, Super fun. Um, you could have a referee that no one can accidentally kill. Mm -hmm. Anyway, it's, it's, it's up to you. Come up with some, some cool usage for it. Cool. Oh, hey, cool. McKenna's back. Oh, yay. <laughs> um, excellent. Uh, I think there was one more featured. Was there anything else on arena building that you wanted to go over? We covered most of it. Yeah, I think, it? you know, other, other than just there's tons of decorations <laughs> dancing, in the arena we haven't it. shown yet. Um, <laughs> Like Seth said, you know, decorating in the arena is, those are all upgrades that you actually purchase for the arena. Um, mm -hmm. Unlike decorating in your guild hall, all of those are decorations that you have to build and create more than one of. Right. All the arena decorations, once you've unlocked the upgrade, you have that decoration available to you and you get a huge number of those decorations that cool. you can then use. Cool. That's going to be so much fun to watch, especially on like live streams and stuff. People like arena fighting and then like, I don't know building stuff on the fly. It'll be so good. And I, and I think it's right now it's going to end up being about uh, two months in um, uh, for guilds to get to the point that they unlock their arena and are able oh, to, true, to plan right? their content wise. Again, reminder, all of this it's stuff, a whole forever. guild hall is nine months to get everything. Um, and yeah. we'll keep adding to that. Uh, and I think that's part of the joy of all of this. Uh, it's going to be fun to watch guilds race and see which guilds get their arena first. And then mm. that first day when people come in and start playing in there, that's going to be really cool for the game. I can't wait to see what people come up with in here. Cool. Yeah, it's going to be pretty cool. Um, I think there's just one more thing we wanted to talk about today. I think that was the uh, one more feature, the cross guild chat. Did we yeah. want to talk a little bit about yeah, that? How about that works? That. Okay, so I'm going to. Or we can keep dancing. Chat over here, so <laughs> cool. Oh, we can do both actually. <laughs> Dance and chat. <laughs> okay, uh, so uh, slash G will chat to the current guild. Uh, so in the guild panel, you'll notice G1, G2, G3, G4, G5. Those are the dedicated chat channels for those guilds. Yeah. So I can go slash G4, and I'm still chatting to the current guild. I can go slash uh, G3. So McKenna's in this guild. Now, if McKenna replies to me on, uh, on that channel, mm -hmm. <laughs> this is a test. A test, yes. Ken, are you paying attention? Send me out the oh. <laughs> oh, look. And so, and so here I am representing a completely different guild, but I'm still able to watch the chat going on for the uh, G3 guild, the uh, Chocolate Wing Confederation. Oh, wow, yeah. I don't know about you guys, but I think of all the things we're doing for guilds, this actually might affect to the way I play the game more than anything else. Mm -hmm. uh, I have five guilds that I love and want to listen to chat channels on uh, and miss events all the time because I can't hear any of them chatting in their guild chats. Mm -hmm. uh, I feel like this is incentive to find great guilds, join up with them, um, and to keep your five guild slots full because you're always going to be hearing about great events that other guilds have going on and it's an opportunity for you to, go, to jump in and play with just a lot more people. Uh, I think this is going to be really, really powerful for the game and our social communities in particular. Yeah. Right. Though, if for some reason you do want a little more silence and maybe everybody's talking at once and you can't keep track of all of those channels, you can set chat preferences 
um, in order to actually specifically hide chat channels that okay. you might be finding are interfering with your ability to keep track of the conversations that you really want to focus on at that time. And then return it to having everybody at once. That's really helpful. And uh, we, you know, some folks have asked in general, like, what we're going to do with the chat stuff. One of the questions is for those larger guilds that are, you know, two, three thousand, five thousand across a whole bunch of different uh, separate guilds. Um, is this a solution for them? And the answer is no. This is this is a great way for you to be a member of a bunch of different guilds and be able to chat with them. This is not our solution for massive guilds that are way bigger than 500 that want to have a shared ability to all chat together. That is something we're aware of. We know that there are guilds asking for that functionality. Um, currently, they make up a very small percentage of the total mm -hmm. guilds in Guild Wars 2. Um, so we really wanted to get this done first. Um, but that is something we are aware of and you know have not forgotten uh, as something to look at in the future as well. How can we better support those massive community guilds? Mm -hmm. Um, I think that might wrap us up for today. Um, man, so much going on. Uh, we have another live stream tomorrow uh, to wrap up everything we've talked about for Guild Week, for Guild Chat. Hopefully Ruby will be back. I hope she feels better very soon. Um, I yes, hope I did Ruby. you proud. I know. Love. Um, sorry we didn't have as many puns today. Yeah. Got to bring those back tomorrow. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> All right, cool. Um, well, thanks to Seth, Dara, and Colin for coming by and joining us. And... Stay tuned. We have some live streamers coming up next, uh, so we'll kick it to them pretty soon. Beta 